context, when a robber sees a policeman, he's terrified. So for the robber, the policeman is a terrorist. So in this context, every Muslim should be a terrorist. Whenever a robber sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Whenever a robber sees any anti-social element, he should be terrified. And I further go on to clarify that I know more commonly the word terrorist is used for a person who terrorizes an innocent human being. In this context, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. I am very clear. I have to tell the press that she has excluded me from entering UK because I said that no Muslim should even terrorize a single innocent human being. If I go to the press and say that she has banned me, she has excluded me from UK because she objected on my one sentence that I said no Muslim should even terrorize a single innocent human being. So what I feel it's out of context. And there may be people who will say that why do you use such language? See this is English language. And if you hear my original lecture, it was talking about an article that came in Times of India in 2003. Talking about a very famous inspector by the name of Inspector Angre. And the article says that Inspector Angre terrorizes the underworld. So in this context I have said that this word terrorist means a person who terrorizes. So in this context I said that whenever a robber sees a policeman he is terrified. So in context it is very clear. I am telling the Muslims that you should see to it that the anti-social element gets scared of the Muslim. At the same time, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. It's absolutely clear. So I don't see any reason that why should this statement be objectionable to the UK government. And the second statement that she feels is objectionable, that she quotes and she says, and she quotes me, that beware of Muslims saying Osama bin Laden is right or wrong. I reject them. We don't know. But if you ask my view, if given the truth, if he's fighting the enemies of Islam, I'm for him. I don't know what he's doing. I'm not in touch with him. I don't know him personally. I read the newspaper. If he's terrorizing the terrorist, if he's terrorizing America the terrorist, the biggest terrorist, he's following Islam. In bracket, source. YouTube 2006. When I read this statement which had come earlier in the UK press, I immediately went to the YouTube and I saw and I realized that this lecture of mine was not given in 2006, it was given in 1996. So imagine they are attributing this lecture to 2006 and any normal person, you don't have to be an intelligent CID or belong to Scotland Yard, to see that you can easily see that I am looking 15 years younger. And there you can see my physique and you can, you can see my face. They can easily judge that it's an old video. And this was given in Singapore. And I've never been to Singapore in 2006. This lecture of mine was a lecture given in Singapore in 1996. And it was shot by the local organizers. And later on, some prejudiced group, what they did, they manipulated and they cut paste my lecture and they present it on the YouTube. Now how can a clipping of YouTube presented by an unknown person without any proof can act as evidence against me? What I say, this clip is manipulated and irrespective whether it's manipulated or not. This statement of mine that they have shown on YouTube was not given in 2006. It was given in 1996 which was five years before 9-11 attack. So how can they attribute this statement and if you read in context, if this has been mentioned five years before, in no way can you attribute this statement to 9-11. And that is the explanation I gave in the press release that this was manipulated and this can never be as an evidence.